Tonight, I want to talk a bit about mindset. And I want you to imagine somebody that you know who is radiantly healthy, right? You probably imagine that she sleeps well, she eats well, that she finds purpose in her life, and she relaxes. I doubt that you envision her waking up to prescription bottles, buoying her way through her day with coffee and sugar, and drinking herself to sleep at night. So it turns out that we do have a sense of alignment with what health is. It's just that we've lost the roadmap along the way. So maybe some of you imagine that medication is your safety net. Maybe you need it to function, let alone to feel well. Maybe you've been to two, three, five, 15 different doctors, even expert specialists, and you're bumping up against the glass ceiling of what conventional medicine has to offer because nobody is asking the question, why? Maybe you've tried your hand at integrative medicine. Aren't there great natural complements for all that conventional medicine has to offer? Can't we have the best of both worlds? I'm here tonight to tell you that the only path to true and lasting wellness is leaving conventional medicine behind. Because this is not just about symptom suppression, it's about health freedom. But first, I have to admit that I was once a conventional doctor and a regular American. I can still remember my last two slices of pepperoni pizza on 33rd and 3rd. And this was after about eight years of forced sleep deprivation through my residency and fellowship. I was a VIP candy purchaser at the Bellevue gift store. I took birth control. I never exercised. I dyed my hair black. And I never took time to meditate. The price that I paid was Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So what follows isn't coming from on high. It's coming from literally thousands of hours of research and my own personal journey back from what could have been a chronic autoimmune disease. And what I have to tell you is that I believe that we've been duped, that my entire training was predicated on a disease care model that offers patients only one solution, and that's a prescription, and never a shot at true wellness. We have handed over our health, I believe, to corporations that are in bed with government and media and that are loyal to their shareholders, not to you. And that we are buying into a paradigm that is predicated on these notions, that we are born broken, that fear is an appropriate response to symptoms, that we need chemicals to feel better, that doctors always know what they're doing, and that the body is a machine requiring recalibration. So this system is reliant on our being dependent and unempowered. So as I've said, if we are wilting, withering plants on a dark, stuffy shelf, yeah, we'll be taken off the shelf and we'll be propped up with sticks and pins. But what we really need, of course, is clean air, sunlight, and clean water. Because this is how plants flourish in a way that we can't replicate synthetically. And it has taken decades of reprogramming to obscure this very obvious truth about ourselves. So I want you to open your mind, if you haven't already, to these concepts. That prevention is possible, and it's not about mammograms and colonoscopies. That medication treatment comes at a steep cost. That optimal health is not possible through medication. That your health is under your control. And that lifestyle medicine sends the body a signal of safety. So when I meet with patients, I seek to resolve the root cause of their presenting symptoms. We look at food intolerances, sugar imbalance, chemical exposure, thyroid autoimmunity, and nutrient deficiency. And most of the time, we can make measurable change within 30 days. And we can do this because I ask them to engage in radical dietary change. I ask them to increase their nutrient density, to decrease inflammatory foods, and to balance blood sugar. I ask them to take this prescription very seriously. And the reason that this works is because food is so much more than fuel, right? It's information. So I'll tell you about a patient some of you may have even heard about already from me because it was such a dramatic example. So she came to me straight from a psychiatric hospital. She was on uh, three psychiatric medications, but still having six panic attacks a day, according to her. So she was on her way to electroconvulsive therapy because that's what we do in psychiatry when we run out of ideas. And so she was very motivated to follow my dietary prescription. After 30 days, she came back and she said, for the first time in my adult life, I have not had a panic attack. And at that point, I already had her blood work 
back and I knew we hadn't performed any major miracles, we just resolved her dysglycemia. So that would have been very excited if the story ended there, except for then she got a flu shot. And she was hospitalized for ascending paralysis, which, while acutely resolved, uh, left her struggling with ongoing autoimmune symptoms. And this happened because she hadn't yet put on her thinking hat, the one of radical holism, and the one that tells her that immunity is not in a pharmaceutical product that contains egg proteins, adventitious viruses, formaldehyde, polysorbate 80, and mercury. And this has happened to me numerous times where, particularly with antibiotics, when they're prescribed reflexively without any consideration for effective natural alternatives or for potentially disabling and debilitating side effects. So I ask my patients to begin to think differently, to cultivate a critical eye around consumerism and healthcare decision making, to hold themselves and their bodies to a higher integrity. And I try to model this for them because I have no intentions of ever returning to a life that involves Tylenol, Advil, Robitussin, vaccines, antibiotics, even epidurals, or chemotherapy under any circumstances. And this may sound rash to you, right? But why? Because I think we imagine that we can pull one thread of the web and not move the entire thing. But we're wrong. And it turns out that there's an easier way to heal and to prevent illness. And it involves communicating with the body in a language that it understands after millions of years of evolution with its environment. And the problem is that it's so simple, it's almost an act of rebellion to consider this type of lifestyle. And maybe some of you don't consider yourselves rebels. Maybe you like to do as you're told and to conform to expectations. But it's my belief that in this health climate, if you don't access your inner compass, and if you do exactly what your doctor tells you to do, there are very good odds that you're going to spend a lot of your life sick. And that's why we have to look behind the curtain. We have to look at the fact that Western medicine is killing us. And we have to start considering that despite the fact that our doctors are probably very well-intentioned people who put blood, sweat, and tears into their training, we have to start asking who is funding that training. Because some of us are speaking out about the fact that our training and medical education are bought. Unfortunately, in the balance between benefits and risks, it is an uncomfortable truth that most drugs do not work in most patients. So before I read this condemning quote in the British Medical Journal, I had already taken a very deep dive into ghost-written, suppressed, and manipulated data that essentially undermined all of gold standard practice in psychiatry and obstetrics, my specialties. And even the Mayo Clinic begrudgingly agrees that 40% of practice should be discarded. But unfortunately, According to data, it takes 17 years for this science to trickles, trickle into your doctor's hands. So this is how modern medicine is not ref reflecting modern science. And by modern science, I mean concepts like the microbiome, like epigenetics, like toxicant exposure, and like biochemical individuality. We are still using a model that employs a one gene, one ill, one pill system of understanding. And the problem is that this model is totally ill-equipped to tell you as an individual how you will react with regard to efficacy and safety to a given pharmaceutical intervention. So I acknowledge that there is a role for Western medicine. If I get hit by a truck, please do not bring me to my naturopath. Uh, but for the most part, pharmaceutical products carry long lists of potential unintended and largely unpredictable side effects, some of which may be disabling and permanent. So I'm going to suggest that perhaps we should relocate our fear, because perhaps sometimes it's more dangerous to do something than to just do nothing. Because the medical industrial complex knows that we have a tendency to worry, right? They know that fear grabs us. And they know that if we believed in the capacity of our body and mind to heal themselves when well-supported in vitalism, 
that we would have less and less need for their services. But many of us are walking around, essentially waiting for the other health shoe to drop, right? Our breasts are ticking time bombs for cancer. We're just a handshake or a cough away from a deadly infectious disease. And we just put out all of these little fires with medication after medication. Because the pharmaceutical industry partners with media and they garner our loyalty through fear, right? It's as if horrible, deadly diseases are falling from the sky and they are handing out bulletproof umbrellas. But it's my passionate belief that there is a way to navigate health without fear. And I think it has something to do with empowerment. Right, because when we make decisions from a place of fear, this myopic place, we may offer ourselves a sense of less disorder, but many times we are engendering much more complex and difficult to solve problems. So these days I partner with my patients and they work hard. They work hard at a time when they can barely lift a finger. And when the prospect of bringing a prescription slip to a Duane Reed sparkles like the North Star in their dark sky. But I think that they do it because of my conviction. And I think they're also pretty curious about a process that asks the question why. And maybe they feel they deserve to explore that. Right, so these days I have miracle cures in my practice every week. But when I was prescribing, I never had one. Really all that I'm doing is helping patients to engage self-education. I'm asking them to start connecting dots and look at causality, right? So if I ask them not to eat wheat for a month and then they have a bagel and they forget their ATM pin number and they have a migraine for three days, well good. Then we have data. We've engaged the process of learning about themselves. So I like to think of myself as part of an empowerment movement. I think you can hear the rumble in the doctor's office, in the little league stands, and in the grocery store. We're talking to each other. We're having our babies at home. We're schooling them there. We're growing our own food. And we are finding doctors who get it. And we're doing that because we see that the emperor has no clothes and that government and industry do not have our best interest at heart. In fact, they don't even know what health is. So I'm going to ask you, challenge you, to shine a very bright light on all of your assumptions about the necessity and utility of conventional medicine. I'm going to ask you to challenge your carve-outs, because I think that when you wipe these lenses clean, you'll have the opportunity to take back what you've given away. So as was recently quoted on my sister platform, Fearless Parent, everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear. Thanks so much for watching, and for more great clips like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I've created a special free video just for you. It's called The Five Steps to Becoming a Leader in Your Wellness Community, and it'll give you some of the starting points on how to position yourself as the leader in your zip code of your health community. All you have to do is click on the link below.